So, welcome to my video on my new reloading setup. Um, I apologize now for cuts in the video. I only have one camera to work with, so I will be repositioning it uh, throughout this video to give you a better view uh, as I'm talking. Um, after a lot of questions and a lot of research, I ended up settling on a Lee Auto Breech Lock Pro Progressive Press. Um, and I'm going to go through my process of installation, and uh, hopefully my experience with this uh, will help others uh, looking at the same hardware. I will be leaving a list of the parts uh, in the video description below. Now, uh, when I started unboxing this thing, I decided to start from the bottom up, uh, just like building a Lego kit. Now, the first thing I started with was actually the bench plate kit. Um, the bench plate kit comes with the bench plate itself, the uh, hold down clamps, and a set of Phillips screws for those. And it comes with the press mounting plate and the press mounting plate hardware, which are a set of three elevator bolts and nuts and washers. Now, with the bench plate, uh, when you go to mount it to your workbench top, you want to get this edge as close to flush with the edge of your workbench as possible. Uh, you might also give it a little bit of an overhang. And the reason for that is so that you have clearance for the, the central ram and the decapping tube. Um, I have seen some people actually have to cut notches out of the under their desk down here just so that they don't accidentally catch the decapping tube and break it off. And as you can see, it's just held on with a little plastic ring, and uh, I imagine it's quite fragile. Now, when I mounted my bench plate, uh, I actually used some button head Allen bolts. And the reason I did this is I like the rounded profile on them, and I find it less likely that I'm going to snag anything, um, and I ha didn't want to risk any interference with the mounting clamps. Along with the button head Allen bolts. Uh, I also used uh, some fender washers and nylock nuts to provide a much more secure hold down for the press. Well, onto the mounting clamps. Um, Lee actually provides four pan head Phillips screws for these. And as you can see, they're, they're very tiny. And uh, I didn't like the idea of having to keep a Phillips screwdriver around. So I actually followed the recommendation from another YouTube video and replace them with some quarter 20 shoulder bolts. Uh, these lift the head up quite a bit and make it accessible for loosening and tightening by hand. Uh, you can actually get knob caps that go on these to, to make it even easier for you. Now with the mounting plate itself, uh, Lee provides the required hardware uh, three elevator bolts and the nuts and washers and they just slide right up through the bottom of the plate tighten them down and then slide the press into into place and tighten down the locking clamps now that we've got the press securely mounted to the bench let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, the press itself i'm going to go ahead and remove all the pieces and parts that i've installed and we'll go through it step by step. Now, when you first get your press, the handle will actually be spun around backwards. So all you have to do to fix this is to loosen this bolt up and then turn the handle 180 degrees and then retighten that bolt. If you notice the clamp on this arm, it'll actually allow for adjusting the length of the handle up and down quite a bit. But you should be careful that if you shorten the, the arm too much, the handle can interfere with the slide here for the case feeder. As you can see, the arm for the press actually does come down pretty low from my desk. If this is too low for you, there are some companies that actually make stands that will, that will raise the press up about 10 inches. 
and that should help quite a bit. Now, as I move up the press through the installation process, I would like to briefly touch on something that I feel is a marked improvement over other Lee presses, and that is the case feeder. Uh, this connection on previous progressive presses was a solid rod. Uh, Lee has actually changed this out for a spring, and the reason this becomes important is that if you have any sort of malfunction or jam with that solid connecting rod, it would bend. And in this case, you never have to worry about that. Now moving bottom up, the next thing that we should be taking care of would be the shell plate. Uh, unfortunately, there's actually something else that has to be done first. And that is the bushings. So the Auto Breech Lock Pro comes with three of their breech lock bushings and one of their lock ring eliminator bushings. Uh, as you can see, the lock ring eliminator bushing was in position four. Whatever bushing is in the number four position has to be removed before we can install the shell plate. The reason for this is that the bushing actually locks down the indexing rod. Once the bushing has been removed, you can operate the handle of the press and the indexing rod will pop right up. So now that the indexing rod has been removed, we need to go ahead and install the shell plate. I'm going to go ahead and drop the carrier just a little bit and brace the arm against myself so that the carrier doesn't move around. What we need to do is take off the case ejector arm and it just pops right off this knurled centerpiece. We're going to take our shell plate, make sure that the number is stamped facing up. And I'm going to take the Allen wrench that came with our press and I'm going to put it in right down the centerpiece and brace it against this arm. Now from there we'll just take the shell plate and spin it counterclockwise to tighten it down. As I do that you can hear the indexing detent clicking and nice and snug. Take the Allen wrench out then we will put the case ejector arm back in place and make sure that we get this little pin on the end in that little cup. From there, spin it around till it clicks into place on a detent, drop the ram, and you will get the indexing pin pop right up through that alignment hole. If you can't drop it all the way, it means that this thing is not in alignment and the pin is stuck on the underside of the plate. From there, we will go ahead and we will take the indexing rod and drop it right down through the center, right into the hole, and push it down. Now, as I mentioned before, the Auto Breech Lock Pro comes with three of these steel breech lock bushings. My recommendation for you is to remove them and then reinsert them before you start seeding dies in them. Uh, the reason for this recommendation is that in my press, these bushings were inserted incredibly tightly, and when I attempted to remove them with the dies, I actually started unseating the dies instead. Now, along with the press, I also picked up a spare set of these breech lock bushings. And when I did, I noticed the threads on these are incredibly sharp. Uh, they're machine cut and the tops of the threads are, are quite sharp, but in the grooves between the threads, they are incredibly rough. Like running sandpaper, uh, or two pieces of sandpaper together are rough. And I think that's actually why when I got these, the bushings were locked into place. They had dropped in and those rough grooves just bound up. So that's the part of the reason why I recommend make sure you can take the bushing out before you try and put anything in them. 
Now with the lock ring eliminator bushing being made out of billet aluminum, I expect those sharp threads are going to start eating into this fairly quickly. Uh, as you can may not be able to tell, there's actually points on here where that's already happened, and that's just from removing this from the press head. Um, something else of, of difference on these, even though the threads are cut with the same process, these feel like they've been um, knocked down a bit, like with some emery cloth or, or six or 800 grit sandpaper or something. Uh, my recommendation would be to do the same to these bushings. Um, one benefit of the lock ring eliminator bushings that uh, I didn't pay much attention to is that you can use the same spline wrench for the dies on the bushing itself since this is used to lock down the lock rings on the dies. Once you can get your breech lock bushings in and out of the press without a lot of trouble, go ahead and make sure you've got all your bushings inserted, twist, in, twist locked into place, and then we're going to go ahead and mount the dies. Now for my dies, I went with the Lee uh, Deluxe 4 die carbide set. Um, they also have a 3 die set, but uh, the fourth die that I got is the factory crimp die and depending on the caliber uh, it's either going to be a roll crimp or a taper crimp. Uh, everything that I've read has told me that having that crimp die, that factory crimp die, uh, improves the the feeding reliability of the ammo over the standard bullet seating. So that's what I went with. Um, now the typical order of dies that are inserted in here uh, starts with the decapping and sizing die. And that's what I've got here. We're going to drop that into the number one hole, which is right here next to this case feed hole, and then twist lock it into place. Now on my press, I've noticed I always have a little bit of difficulty. Remember how I mentioned those threads being sharp? Usually I have to rock this into place just because of one of those threads. It always seems to bind up. There we go. Spline wrench on it. Snap. And lock into place. Now something else of note is that inside the bushing holes there are actually O-rings. Now you want to make sure you don't catch those with the bushing or with the die because damage to those may cause the bushing to unintentionally loosen up. Now from there we go on to station number two and we will insert the flaring and powder insertion. Now this comes with a little uh, funnel adapter top but we're not going to use that so we will take that off and it will be replaced with a powder measure. So on the back side here between dies one and two there's actually a tab which is where the safety prime mount uh, screws to. I've heard some people refer to the safety prime as a Pez dispenser which it kind of sort of is. So here is safety prime just clips right there into the bracket and that's it. Now you will note I have a couple of zip ties on this. And this is actually a fairly common modification because the chute here is molded as one piece and then folded back on itself. And part of the problem is that the, the two halves tend to separate. So a lot of people tend to put small zip ties on them at the top and bottom just to make sure that the chute doesn't split apart. Okay, now that we can see the uh, the press head again, up next is die number three. And this is the bullet seating die. Now on the lead dies, they have a tapered head on them. And the reason for this is for the automatic bullet feeder system. 
which is which attaches to this hole down here. And it's actually the one part I don't have, but it is on order. And you can go ahead and drop this into place, lock it down. Now, if you only have the three die set, I would recommend adding in one particular die in this place before the bullet seating die. And that would actually be a Hornady bullet feeding die. And what that is, it's a hollow die with a tube that comes out of the top and it just dispenses the bullets right down into the casing. And then I'd put the bullet seat right here on the number four spot. But since I have the number four, the four piece deluxe set, um, I actually have the bullet feeding mechanism uh, on order. And then we're going to move on to the crimp die. Now the number four uh, bushing spot on this is kind of important. And the reason why is it locks down the auto indexing rod. So even if you don't have four dies in use, you need that fourth position filled with something, even if it is just an empty bushing. So now that we've got our four dies in place, let's move on to the powder measure. What I have here is the Lee Pro Auto Disc powder measure. And the way it conf comes configured out of the box is that this actuator arm is actually mounted to the powder measure. And it's got a spring attached to it right here. Let me grab the manual here, and I will show you exactly what it looks like. And there we go. So there is what the spring lever return looks like. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus here. No, it won't. Well, the spring lever return is actually designed for use with single stage presses and turret presses. And I think it's kind of a bad design. And here is why. Right there. Now the base of this is metal, but the way the spring is attached is right here, and then it's stretched across that support piece before it's attached to the catch on this arm. And every time this would actuate, you'll get a loud twang sound where the coils of the spring are stretching across and then snapping off. And I, unfortunately, I can see a point where that spring might break that. But thankfully for the uh, progressive press, you don't need this arm. You need this one. One of the other benefits of this particular uh, return arm is that if you push it all the way up against the bottom of the uh, powder measure, the disc, it actually unlocks the disc and you can pull the disc out and change them without ever having to dismantle the powder feed. We'll slide that back in, line that slot up on the disc with that arm, then push it in, and then pull that down. There we go. Now something to note, along with the powder measure, everything that I had been getting told was that I also needed the riser to go with it. And I was told that the, the purpose of the riser was to lift the powder measure up out of the way of the, the safety prime system. What nobody had mentioned to me was that this is used for single stage presses and it is used for turret presses but it doesn't necessarily need to be used on a progressive. And as I discovered, I 
don't think that I will be needing it on mine. So drop that back in its tube, back over to there. So from here, I'm going to take my powder measure, drop it into the flaring die, and we are going to tighten it down into place. Uh, if I can get my fingers on that little thumb screw. All right, nice and tight. Now, if you'll notice, I actually, this uh, actuator arm for the reset is actually supposed to be lined up vertically over the top of this little loop right here. And the reason for that is how this actuator arm operates, which unfortunately I feel is a severe flaw. It's, it's got a problem, and I'll show you what that is. So the Pro Auto Disc powder measure uses this little ball chain as a reset mechanism. And what you're supposed to do is take this chain, feed it through the outside hole, and then feed it back through the inside hole. And that's uh, the tension lock for it. The other end of the chain, you're supposed to drop through this little hole in the carrier, and then with the slack on the underside, slide on a little tension spring, and then lock it into place with this little brass bell, which just slides over the chain like so. Now the reason I say this is a flaw is because if you look at the carrier, that attachment point sits right over the top of the mounting bolt. And what happens when you bring that carrier down is that it actually crushes the spring and that little locking belt against that bolt. And if you do that enough times, in my case it only took three before that bell got crushed and came off the chain. And that to me is a problem. So here's how I went about solving it. Let me go ahead and pull this chain out. And then we will pull it out of the carrier. And oddly enough, all I needed to fix it was a washer. So here's a slightly different angle of the powder measure. And what I did was I actually turned it until the reset arm is lined up directly over the, uh, the support rod here for the press head. We're going to go ahead and remove that. And then what I'm, going to, what I'm doing is I'm going to loosen up all the Allen bolts for the press head, except for this one. This one I'm actually going to take out. And the reason for is so that I can slip this washer with that hole over that rod. And we'll set it back down, and we will tighten it up. that one, tighten up that one, and then we will go ahead and put the powder measure back in place, and then you know that annoying spring that I, that I didn't like, I'm going to hook 
that spring into that hole that I drilled in the washer and then attach it to that reset arm. There we go. Now, oh, let me, as the powder gets actuated, that spring provides enough tension that it will reset properly. Now, I would love to see Lee actually take this idea and make an actual bracket or molded loop or something uh, of some kind to repurpose this spring specifically for doing this. After all, the spring here on the case feeder has a little molded plastic holder that does something similar for this spring. So, last but not least, is going to be the case feeder. And this is probably one of the most annoying uh, things that I had to set up. And as you can see, there are actually two mounting holes on here. And the reason why is these new case feeders are actually universal. They have a large hole and a small hole. And depending on which bolt hole, mounting hole you use, determines which hole the brass is going to try and feed from. Now if you're using uh, smaller brass for like pistol caliber or something, you're probably going to be using the small hole. And in that case, there is actually this little blocking plate that slides into place over the larger one. That way you don't have brass falling out the back end. Now with that bolt, you've got three nuts. You better have three. You need one to tighten the case feeder down to the bolt. You have a second one that is going to be used for the height adjustment of the bolt. And then you have the third one that locks it down. Now, one of the reasons why I say this is one of the most annoying parts that I've had to put on here has to do with how it attaches. It's got this nice little cast mounting hole down here. But for some reason, no matter how tight that I get that nut, I can never seem to get it tight enough that the case feeder won't rotate. And the problem has to do with clearances. Now, for the height adjustment, it's fairly easy. Put a case into the case feeder and then raise it up about, oh, a penny's thickness, you know, a little less than an eighth of an inch. But what I meant for alignment is this. If you don't get it rotated just right, ah, then the black base here will catch on the underside of the press head and do it often enough and I'm pretty sure that it will cause some irreparable damage. There we go. Just barely clears it. The other problem is that if you don't get it close enough, it will actually move the front feed tube out of alignment for the case feeder underneath. Yeah. I wish Lee would come up with some way of making it mount through this existing hole. You know, put like a, a push-button dispenser or something so that it'll drop straight through. Just like you would when you're manually feeding it. Oh well. And last but not least... And last but not least we have my little case collator on top. Uh, as much as I hear people badmouth these things, they do save time and they are incredibly helpful. Now something you may have noticed is one other slight eh, sort of modification that I've done. And that is these tubes. If you notice, I've actually put a quarter twist in the tube. Uh, some people will put zip ties around them to hold them together. By putting this quarter twist in them, it actually 
brings the tubes together, but it puts a little bit of a wedge up here and down here from the cape, from the tubes being twisted so that they don't pop out unexpectedly, which unfortunately has happened when I tested it out initially. Well, that is everything. And I hope uh, this video helps somebody somewhere. Oh, almost forgot one thing. Uh, where's my primer? There it is. There's my primer seat mechanism. Drop it down in there, like so. And, of course, because I only raised it part way, the plate went out of battery. There we go. All done. Hope it helps.